Hello everyone, this is our Dental Talk Without Secrets and today we're going to be discussing diastema closure. There are several ways of doing a diastema closure, but today we're going to be talking about an easy way, something that we can do in our office, in our practice, without any special tool, without any special device. The next video, the video that I'm going to show next week, uh, it's going to be using a different approach, okay? In the next uh, uh, class, in the next talk, we're going to be addressing the bioclear matrices, okay? But today we're going to use just simple things that we have probably in our everyday practice. Okay, this is the case. The patient came to us. She has a diastema that was restored not too long ago, but those teeth were all covered by composite. The two centrals and the canine, the right canine also. If you take a look at the right canine, it seems that the tooth is dark, but that's just because of the composite. It's covered by a dark composite. That's why, uh, actually it's not a dark composite, it's a low value composite, but that's why uh, it looks like that. Okay, so we're going to restore the two centrals and the canine. This uh, diastema closure is also going to be extended to a full veneer, right? Uh, so this is the case, again, from the side view, and now with the lips retracted. And let's start. The first thing we're going to do is remove, is to remove the old composite, okay? This is not an easy task. Of course, we can use, uh, we can use discs, we can use, uh, uh, we can use discs, we can use burrs, we can use a scalpel number 12, okay, blade, and everything that helps removing the composite, but preserving the most of the dental, uh, of the sound tooth structure of the patient, okay? So it's not an easy task. We can do that easier than, of course, if we're going to be removing a uh, ceramic veneer, but still, it's a very, uh, it's very tiresome, it's very tricky, and you and it takes a real long time to remove everything. You see, uh, what you have there, that's not caries, that's not uh, secondary caries or anything, that's just a stain between the two layers of composites that we have on that tooth. So we're removing everything, because I don't want to do my new restoration on top of the old composites. You see here, this is an interesting thing to take a look, you see that the patient had uh, beneath those restorations a very large white spot. I removed a little bit more of that because I was talking uh, before that I'm trying to preserve the most out of the uh, sound tooth structure of the patient. But the white spot, that white lesion over there, I'm going to try to remove it the best I can. Okay, the best I can. But it's a deep lesion. It's a deep lesion. So if I have about uh, one millimeter uh, of thickness, to do my restoration, that's okay. If I still have some white spot down there, very close to the dentin, or sometimes onto the dentin, I'm going to do something different to try to mask that. I'm gonna show you that in a moment. So I'm removing a little bit of the white stain, of the white lesion, you see? Still, there is a little bit of it. I have a little bit on the mesial also, now I'm going to remove the composite of the other tooth. So uh, I, uh, I keep changing the instruments, okay? I keep changing from the burr to the disc to the scalpel until I think I have everything clear. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place, I'm going to place a metal strip around those two centrals to prevent the conditioning and the adhesive to touch the two laterals, okay? So I'm going to condition the, all the surface of the, those two teeth. I'm going to, uh, to condition everything, making sure the whole surface uh, is covered by the phosphoric acid. Now I'm going throughly, uh, throughly, very intensely uh, clean everything 
and now after I dry it out I can see that I still have a lot of composite on top of those teeth you see take a look at that a lot of composites okay not just on the on the buccal surface but you have uh, close to the gingiva close to the to the rubber dam you, you still have a lot of composites some may think that well what's the problem you can bond a new composite on top of the old one but not like this and of course to bond a composite on top of enamel you will have a much better result in terms of, of a long lasting restoration than if you do your restoration on top of an old composite okay so uh, the longevity will be better will be best if you do your restoration if you bond your restoration onto the tooth structure not onto the old composite uh, another thing about the rubber dam sometimes i do restorations without the rubber dam but in cases where i'm going to be working very close to the gingiva very close to the gums i prefer to use the rubber dam because it always you're going to, at some point of the restoration you will have some bleeding you have some uh some liquid coming from the gingiva and something is going to to contaminate your interface between the between the adhesive and the composite between the tooth and the adhesive so to make sure everything is clean and will uh, keep cleaning clean all through my procedure i prefer to use the rubber jam okay okay there you, you see a lot of composites a lot of composites a lot of composites so i'm going to remove everything again and then i'm going to condition again that's just a spatula that i'm using just to 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 put away a little bit of the uh, rubber dam and now i'm and i'll do that as many times as it's necessary okay so i see how much composite i still have there of course what you see here is not a camera that is recording what i'm doing outside of the mouth no this is a camera that is uh that is attached to the microscope that i'm working with people that knows me uh, knows that everything i do i do looking through the microscope and i've and i have been doing that for the past 23 years so everything I do, I do with the microscope. So what you see here is exactly what I see while I'm working uh, in this procedure. Okay? So I'm removing all the composites, all the, everything, all the composites, everything, everything, everything. You see? And then I will condition again, okay? Uh, acid etch all over again and now now it's okay now i can go on with my restoration and the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to do before i started removing those restorations i made a silicone matrix on the old restorations of this patient okay actually i i increased a little bit of the incisal edge with a composite i didn't bond the composite just put a little bit of composite there and then i made a silicone right onto the mouth right inside the mouth of the patient okay and it's uh using that silicone matrix that i'm going to start my restoration so here i'm applying uh the adhesive it's a universal uh scotch bond universal from 3m so i'm a lot of adhesive and then i evaporate strongly the solvent and now i'm putting uh, enamel plus hri universal enamel number three which is the high um uh, it's a high value enamel i place it onto the onto the matrix onto the silicone matrix and then i press the matrix onto the tooth it's important to have that this this layer of composite that will be that will become the palatal surface of my restoration of my teeth okay i will call uh, a palatal shell 
palatal shell, okay? So within the space of the diastema, I will have palatal shell on the right central and on the left central, okay? That's what I'm doing. So I'm removing all the excess, as you can see. I'm removing all, and it's important for me to leave that layer very thin. Uh, at the, the, the as thin as 0.5 millimeter thick, okay? It's a very thin layer. At, at the most it's supposed to be is 0.5 millimeter thick, okay? Now I'm uh, I'm cutting through that uh, that silicone shell, okay? I, I'm making the separation of those two teeth, and now. There is still, uh, I'm removing the excesses, but there is still a little bit bonded one to the other one. I'm going to use this saw, a very small saw, just to separate them from the other teeth also. And then I can also use very gently, very gently, a soft flex disc just to smoothen out the incisal edge a little bit. Now I'm going to get a mylar strip and I'm going to place this mylar strip deep inside the sulcus. I'm going to restore first the left central, just that portion, okay, not the whole tooth. I'm going to do first the left central. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to restore just that small portion of the diastema close to the palatal side and close to the gingiva. So in order for me to do that, it's very important that this uh, palatal shell that I made within this space of my diastema comes very close to the papilla, very close to the rubber dam. I'm going to come back here a little bit so you can see. You see? So you, you don't finish that palatal shell on the diastema, uh, at the diastema, I mean, at the middle of the tooth. For example, no, you have to go all the way down, very close, about two, three millimeters away from the papilla. So this is very important because now what you're going to do is, as a, again, I'm going to place a mylar strip, you see, right here. I'm going to place a mylar strip inside the sulcus, inside the sulcus, you see, right there. And... I'm going to put a little bit, this is not, this is not adhesive. This is modeling resin from Ultradent, which is, uh, is, is just monomers, just monomers, has no solvent, no water, nothing that can compromise my composite. So I'm going to put a little bit of modeling resin from Ultradent inside that little space just to moisture a little bit that area. And then on top of that, without polymerizing, I'm going to put the Renamel B1, Renamel Microfill B1. You see, I just put that, uh, that, 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 um, that monomers over, inside there just to to moisten a little bit just to create a, a way to insert in a better in a better manner my viscous composite okay so it will be of course you can also use you can also use a little bit of uh, flowable composite but because the space was very small I prefer to use the other material but you could use a little bit of flowable and then place the composite on top of that. Uh, of course, you can do injection molding with a bioclear matrix, but this is something we're going to be discussing in our next class, okay? We're going to do a diastema closure in, on, in our next dental talk without secrets, but then using the bioclear matrix. But here is just using the mylar stripe, uh, mylar, uh, the mylar stripe that we have in, in, in our uh, everyday practice, okay? That we have in every office. So once I put the composite there, I'm going to pull, to pull the matrix, but very close to the cervical area, okay? I'm not pulling it straight on the, uh, on the direction of the side of the tooth, on the mesial side of the tooth. No, I'm going to, to pull, pull it, closing the, that space in the area 
below the gingiva, okay? So this is what I'm doing. Removing the excess and that polymerize. Once I finish one tooth, I go to the other one. You see, I did one and now another malai strip, put on the other tooth, modeling resin, don't polymerize, put the composite, press onto the modeling resin, okay? Onto the modeling resin, just to fill that area that will be close to the uh, gingiva, okay? Just to fill that. Then I'm going to pull the matrix, you see? Incline it, okay, incline it, but making the contour adequate. So in order for you to succeed with that, you must, in order for you to succeed with that, you must uh, bring that palatal shell very close to the pupilla. Okay, remember that we had the two stains, the white stains, especially on the, on the right central, and we still have a little bit of that white effect on the tooth. So to, to block a little bit of that, what we can do is to use a gray tint, a gray tint, very subtle gray tint, because the gray tint will lower the value of the white stain, okay? So I place a little bit, I use the creative color from Cosmedet, a little bit of gray tint on the white spots, as you can see there. Very, very gentle, very gentle. Very gentle, you see? I can hardly see the white spots. And then after polymerizing, I'm going to use the creative color A1B1LO. That's one, one product, okay? That's the, the shade of the product. This is an opacifier. This is an opaque opacifier from the creative color from Crossmedent that is very subtle also, okay? It's very subtle, so it helps to block a little bit of all those stains that we have onto the surface of the tooth, of the teeth, both teeth. So I do that, I polymerize, and now I'm going to use an opaque composite, a dentin composite. I'm going to use again Enamel Plus HRI, Universal Dentin 1, okay? Universal Dentin 1. So I'm going to place my dentin composite. I'm going to draw my mammalons and making sure I have enough space afterwards to the last layer. So this, those are the mammalons that I'm that I'm sculpting on my dentin over there, and I'm creating those grooves that will be subsequently uh, filled by an opalescent composite. So I did that on the right tooth and then on the left tooth. And now I'm going to use a opalescent composite, Z350. That's how we call it in Brazil, in America. It's the Filtech Supreme, okay? Here in some areas of the world, we call it Z350, but it's a Filtech Supreme a BT shade, which is the blue translucent, blue translucent. So I'm filling in those gaps that I, that I sculpt uh, making those mammalons. So I'm just going to fill it a little bit, just on the incisal edge. And after I polymerize, I check if I have enough space for my enamel. If I don't have enough space, there is no problem if you remove a little bit of those composites, okay? And that's what happened, actually. You see? So I remove it a little bit, just a little bit, and then after that, I'll clean it up with the phosphoric acid, I wash it out, I dry it, I place a little bit of adhesive, I, I evaporate very thoroughly the solvent, very thoroughly, and now without polymerizing the adhesive, I'll just place my Renamel B1, which is the chromatic enamel. That's it. So I'll go through the whole surface of the tooth, okay? And also onto my diastema. You see that I pulled my matrix. That was a metal matrix, could be a, a mylar matrix, but could be a metal matrix, metal strip. I just pull it from buccal to lingual, from buccal to palatal surface, you see? And while I do that, I make a movement 
to create the contour, the proper contour of the proximal walls, of the proximal surfaces. Okay, so I did one central and now I'm going to finish the other one. After that, we're going to start our uh, finishing and polishing. Okay, we start always with the discs. This is, the, these are the soft legs from 3M. I'm using all those discs. Uh, creating the proper anatomy. After that, I'm going to draw the, the secondary anatomy, which are the grooves, the, the, the development grooves, horizontal development grooves that will create like three lobes on the surface of those teeth. Okay, so I'm finishing with the, with the discs. And now I'm going to in a, in a moment, <laughs> no, but I'm just removing a little bit of the excess below the gingiva. And now, now I'm drawing the, uh, those grooves, development grooves. And I will be using a long uh, multi-blade burr in horizontal movements, okay? Not vertical movements, horizontal movements like that. And then this is enhanced enhance point to smoothen up enhance is very abrasive but i like that to remove all the 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 the, the uh, to remove the the signs from the from the burst okay and then i will use uh less abrasive rubbers though th th this this last one here is a very good one this one here is a spiral from eve Okay, from Eve, it's a rubber spiral which gives you a very nice polishing, very nice polishing, very nice polishing. And this is the final restoration. And here I also have the canine restored already. These are the materials that I used. Okay, so I used on the palatal shell enamel composite, uh, enamel plus universal enamel 3 which is the high value and then dentin composite i use the enamel plus also universal dentin 1 uh, the effects i use the creative color the graded tint the gray tint and the a1b1 lo uh, opacifier i use the z350 which is the filtex supreme uh, bt blue transparent to make the opalescent effect and on the top of the tooth that uh, on the whole veneer of and veneering the whole tooth, I use the Renamo B1. B1. So here is on a side view, before and after. Here, before, after removing the restoration, the old restoration, and after. Okay. As I said before, there are other ways to do this. For example, in this case here, I had to 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 remove a little bit of the distal of the two centrals which create because of to to get it to, into proportion because the patient thought those teeth those centrals were too large too wide i mean too wide so i had to remove a little bit of them and then it created a, a diastem a very small diastem then i used to to close here you can use the bioclear matrix which is a very good uh solution for situations like this but as i didn't have the bioclear matrix at the time i used a posterior metal matrix metal partial matrix okay a posterior one like this one here okay so this is uh, i'm just cleaning it up uh, you're going to see that i'm going to get that small posterior partial metal matrix you see i'm going to place it in a vertical way and then i'm going to hold it in the back with my my finger okay i will uh, do the the conditioning the acid etching uh, inside the matrix and then after washing and drying i will place my adhesive and then i'll do my composite just chromatic uh, enamel just chromatic enamel over there I will use, as I said before, the matrix just to create the proper contour. I have uh, a wooden wedge over there to help me. I don't use it often, the wedge. 
after polymerizing, I'm going to put a little bit more on the, the mesial to incisal portion of the tooth. Okay, I'm using a mylar stripe to help me with the contour and leaving a little bit of space from mesial to incisal to put a little bit of achromatic enamel just to create a little bit of opalescent effect. You see, a, no, uh, a achromatic enamel just to create a little effect, incisal effect. That's it. Very easy, very simple, and gives you a nice result. You see? I always do that. I always get my mylar stripe and I pass it through from buccal to lingual to create the proper contour on the proximal surface, on the proximal surfaces. Okay, that's it. That's the restoration. Chromatic enamel, renamel A1, and achromatic enamel, renamel, uh, light incisal. That's it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Next time, we're going to be discussing how we can use the bioclear matrices to do diastema closure. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching.